All right, guys, so in today's video, I want to show you a what I think is a pretty cool way of managing these little bento layouts for media grids. Could be little effects for a row of uh, content. It could be, you know, a complete layout for, you know, some blog posts and things like that. Uh, but it's a really, really easy way to manage these uh, with a simple class. So if we look at this, the first one on the right hand side here, we've got what five images laid out in a bento grid, which is a 12 column grid. Um, and um, there's, I'm going to show you how that works. The next one down is exactly the same template as that. We've just changed where the elements sit and the quantity of elements. So this one here is exactly the same. On this one, we've added a transition effect to when we mouse over the elements in that grid. And these are exactly the same template. And there's an extra thing we can do with this, which I'll show you as we go through as well. Um, so what I'm going to look at here is the go back to the uh, editor and show you exactly how this works. So what we've got here is a Bento Grid class. I'll create a class here called Bento Grid 12. And if we look at the CSS for that, I'm actually going to zoom in using Advanced SEMA here uh, so we can actually see this on the screen. I'm going to zoom in that, to that there. This is my typical setup where I put all my settings into a single root block using CSS variables. Then you don't have to worry about the CSS further down here as you grow this or down the track, you go, you know what, I want to create a one of these bento grids, but I don't want to be 12, I want to be 6. Or I want to have a larger space or a lower space, or you know, I want my rows to be higher. Um, or my radius or my wrappers, I want to be higher. You just go to your settings here. You don't have to go through and go, oh, where did I apply that border radius? Uh, how do I make those rows higher? You don't have to look through your CSS rules. You just change these variables. So it's kind of like a settings block. Okay, so what we've got here is... We look at the actual application of those settings. The obvious thing, it's a grid. Uh, you probably don't need this align items initial. That's just uh, a default setting. Uh, grid template columns. We're going to tell it we want it to be that many columns wide, which is our variable where I'm using a framework variable, my own framework that I created in Bricks using the Bricks um, uh, variable manager. Uh, you can put an actual value in there or you can use your own framework value to put in there. It's up to you. But basically what we want a 12 column grid. So 12 column grid that gets applied there. The grid gap that we get from the setting up there and the auto grid rows. That's where so you can tell a cell that it is so many rows high. And this is the how it will calculate the height of each row. So I'm telling it it's my space M, space medium. And so each row I add is going to add space medium uh, times the number of rows to it. So if you don't do that, what it'll do is try and work out the height that the row should be based on the content that you put in there. And you end up with some extremes and your vari variations in your grid. This allows you to control it by setting the, uh, the grid auto rows height. In fact, it's basically, it's a bad name. They should call it the auto row height or something like that, but they don't. So that is what it is. Uh, then I've got a wrapper, which I'll come back to when I show you the actual, um, uh, the, the structure for this. So I've got a wrapper around my media and I set my border radius on the, on the wrapper and my overflow bit hidden. That's so I can apply effect to the media that's inside the wrapper, like scaling, moving, etc., And it, gets cropped by the wrapper so it doesn't move outside the wrapper that's the idea of that uh, then we're basically using a when we wrap hover over our wrapper we want to change our image scale to be our image scale when we're hovered uh, image transform to be our image transform when we're hovered so those are all again set up here so we have a pair scale and scale hover transform and transform hover uh, and basically, when we hover our wrapper, we want those to change. We then also basically set a image transition. I've just gone the lazy way and just said, all oh, you can just put the scale and translate if you want in there. Uh, but I just kept it simple. And we use my framework variable for the speed of the transition. And again, you can put a fixed value here. You can put your own framework value there. Up to you. All right. Then we come down to our image, which is inside. So we're using an image for our media. And we're going to tell it to be a width of 100% and a height of 100%. That is so that it fills the space of the grid when we tell it it's X amount of rows, X amount of columns. Okay. 
And then we're going to modify a single modifier for our transition. So if we add the transition class to it, then it's going to transition. If we don't add the transition class, it's not going to transition. So looking at that in the front end here, this one here, so it's scale back there. Uh, this one does not have the transition class on it. Uh, this one does have the transition class. And you can see as it scales and moves that the it stays inside the constraints of its wrapper. And that's the idea of having the wrapper there. Okay, so let's go back to this. Uh, what else have I missed there? I think that explains the CSS. So let's come back into the CSS and let's see how this actually works. So let's look at the last example here. So if I click on that image there and then go to the bento grid, it is the standard bento grid and then I've added the transition to it. So because it's got the transition modifier on it as a class, it's going to apply this transition, which means we get the hover transition. And I'll show you, we'll make another class here shortly uh, to make it even, uh, to show you how to make the modifiers for that. Okay, uh, well, uh, yeah, we'll come back to that. All right, so let's go to these. So we'll go to the first image. That's just the image. We can change the image as we set. And by the way, we probably want to set our object fit to cover on all of these because as they scale, we don't want them to distort. So set your object fit to cover on your images. Um, and you might want to sort of reduce these sizes here because they're not going to be displayed very large. So you might want to reduce all your size so you don't end up with some uh, performance issues. So that's a side note. So each of these, what we want to do is we're going to go to the image and then we're going to go to the wrapper. Okay, and on the wrapper, I'm not sure why these are the other way around. It must be the way I've actually set these. Yeah, anyway. So what I've done is if we go to the wrapper, I've told that that starts at grid row one. Uh, that's the problem, the order. Okay, so what I've done here, I'll make a new one, I'll show you. So basically you click on the wrapper and then you tell it, where do you want it to start for the column? Where do you want it to end? Minus one means go all the way to the end. Okay, what row do we want to start on? How many rows do we want it to span? So this image here is going to start on row one and it's going to span for three rows, which remember we set to our space M. So it's three times our space M is going to be the height of that. Okay, we then go to the next image and go to the wrapper. And on that one there, I've told that one to start at grid column uh, one, span for five columns and uh, out of 12 that is, and we've told the rows to span for four. We don't have to tell it where to start. It'll automatically fit to where it can fit on that grid. And it goes, okay, that one's taking up all that space. So I'm gonna put myself at that row there and start from there. So I just need to say it's a span of four. Okay, the next one is that one there. And we go to the style. And this is at the ID level, by the way. And all we're doing is saying, we want that to span for seven and span for two. So it knows that's that's after this image. It's still got space on that row for seven, a span of seven. And then it gives us a span of two for the height there. All right, so just working through and changing these to whatever you want them to be. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate this. Uh, Vento grid here. So we'll just duplicate that. There's my next one down there. In fact, I won't do it that way. I'll duplicate the whole container. So we get some spacing there. Here's our bento grid there. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new modifier to make this compact. At the moment, it's using the excess spacing. Let's create a new modifier. So we go back to our bento grid 12, which is selected into our CSS. I'm going to say, well, let's, where's our gap? There's our gap there. There's our root grid gap there. Scroll down to the bottom. Okay, I'm going to create a new modifier. So I'm going to do R tab uh, dash dash compact. But you can build these up as you wish. Root grid gap is going to be, let's do the, uh, what do we call it? Base excess. Let's do a calc on that. And we're going to divide that by two. Okay, and you can see here it's made no difference to that because we haven't actually applied that modifier. So what we do now is we get our class name, which is our Bento Grid 12. Copy that clipboard, paste it back in, two dashes, and we're going to add our compact modifier to it. 
You don't have to do this once and then it's a class that's created in Bricks and you can use it from there on. There we go. And now we've got a compact version of that grid. Um, did I just change it everywhere? No, I didn't. I must have put it on there as well. So I think I'll put it onto that one as well. Oh, the editor's doing something weird. This editor's doing some crazy things. So what I would typically do in Bricks once I've created these modifiers, I would lock them because we're not going to add anything to those modifiers. Um, we're just going to use them as a modifier that affects the main class. I'm going to do the same with this one. I'm going to lock that. So we don't accidentally go sticking things on there because we want to put all of our modifier class stuff all here so that we can see if we copy and paste this to another site or use it in some other uh, circumstance, we know that um, uh, we can look at this and we know what our modifiers are. All right, I'm going to just refresh that. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, it is the editor. The editor is doing weird things. See that here? This one here, I haven't applied the compact class to, but in the editor, it's showing me that the compact class is applied to it, but in the front end, it is not. Now, if I hit refresh on the editor, this editor is currently driving me mad with the amount of little quirks where, you know, you have to keep refreshing for things to display properly. So now it displays properly. So uh, there's a couple other little weird things in there that I'll feed back to Bricks, but geez, the, the latest update has added a bunch of little quirks in the editor that you have to be aware of. Um, but if you come across those and look at it and you go, oh, that doesn't look like it's supposed to look like, hit the save, hit the reload, and it'll probably be correct. Okay, so now we've created a, another version of that. Let's, and we've created a compact version of it. Let's say we want to change the way this looks. Uh, let's say we don't want all these images here. We just go to this one and delete that. We go to that one, delete that. And with this one here, we might make that a uh, grid row of four. There we go. It's filled in that space there. We then go to this bottom one here. Let's say we want that to be halfway. So we're going to just click on that, go to the wrapper. And let's say we're going to span that by six. Uh, not the row, sorry. That's two. We're going to span by six. Okay, duplicate it. Okay, here's our image there. Let's change the image to maybe the stand here. Again, not showing in the editor. Guarantee if I hit the save, come back here, reload. There it is working in the front end. If I hit the refresh here, it'll work. Okay, there we go. So it's working in the editor as well. So the upshot of all this is that you don't need you know, five different templates with these different bento layouts for showing a little section of you know featured images or whatever it is. Um, you just need one template, which is a one I've just showed you, which is a I've called it my bento grid 12. Uh, you need a bento grid 12. Add some, add some wrappers in there, add some images in there, and it's a simple piece of CSS, which is this CSS here. That CSS, I mean, apart from this settings block here, which adds a little bit to it, I mean, that this here is pretty simple, right? That there, from there to there, is all the CSS we need to make this work. Uh, these are modifiers down here to make it work in different ways, but it's pretty simple, isn't it? So. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to share this code because I want you guys to actually create this yourselves and learn by creating it. Um, so uh, please don't ask me to share it because I don't think that's uh, the way you're going to learn. But anyway, hit the subscribe, hit the like if you like this kind of thing, and we'll see you in the next one.